But even there, you probably aren't maximizing your retirement nest egg. So I want to bring in right now to discuss 401ks and what's your best strategy, Tim Mahoney, author of GPS for Your Retirement. Ken, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Hey, okay, first, uh, you know, 401ks, everyone has them, not right. everyone, but a lot of people, sure. right? And they get a very limited amount of offerings and everyone does the same thing. Should there be a different approach? Gen X, baby boomers, uh, you know. Absolutely. There should be. Yeah, the millenniums, first off, they love technology, right? So they use technology, they might as well invest in technology. So they do have a sliver in the portfolio, add on some technology. You said NASDAQ hit new highs for a reason, those FANG stocks, right? Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, all of them are off to the races. I think technology uh, goes really well with millenniums investing into those. It's interesting because millennials uh, are the most cautious, it feels like, out there, right? They're right. sitting on cash. Uh, you know, of course, they save their money for the Coachella uh, uh, concerts. But uh, it, it, so, what is it about these millennial uh, workers uh, that they should be urged to maximize? Uh, I think so. You know, one thing Albert Einstein said: the eighth wonder of the world. Now, he's a smart, pretty dude, right? Albert Einstein. Yeah. Is compound interest. Take a 25 year old who's not going to retire for 40 years. Think about those numbers and how big they get. And by the way, the 20s is a good time to be putting money away before the kids come, the mortgages and stuff like that. But unfortunately, it's a wasted opportunity for most. But really, the compound interest over time is staggering for that particular group. What are some of the other uh, issues here, Ken? Because uh, a lot of times I'll look at people's portfolios and they think they're diversified. Right. They'll own 10 funds with these fancy names like the New Frontier <laughs> Fund and right, the right. Zenith Fund. Yeah, and, and they're all small caps. <laughs> and, yeah, and they're all the same stocks, right? right? They all own the same stocks and they wonder why they can never truly outperform the market. Yeah, so we use Morningstar a lot. Morningstar makes it a little bit easier, ranking from five stars all the way down to one star. So you can take the group of 401k choices you have, try and match it up with, four, with the Morningstar and see which ones really kind of stick out. So if you're wondering why you're kind but of spinning people the take the next step and see what they actually Absolutely. Are, the yeah, so we stocks. use an MRI sometimes. You actually combine these funds and sometimes you see the overlap that you're talking about. Uh, one thing we also like to for some clients is have like an 80-20, 80% stock funds, 20% bond funds. Now, not bond funds that play defense, but be able to play offense when the market comes in. And when I say bond funds, stay away from high yield and corporate because they act just like stocks. Remember 2008, 2009, people would say, oh, my corporate bond fund is down like stocks. Right. Well, no, you want to flight the quality. You want treasuries or government bonds of that 20%. So when the market comes in, you're able to do something that's, about so it. So that's your hedge. That's sort that's of an insurance policy. Yeah, yeah. But it has to be, again, the bond specifically has to be U.S. government. Again, that's the flight to quality. That's where the money goes when that happens. Have you changed your opinion for older folks I mean we're living longer and right. I, I read somewhere if you hit 60 Five, there's like an 85% chance you'll hit 85. I mean, we're right. living longer and we want to be more active. These old formulas that you, they used to have, subtract your age <laughs> exactly. from 100, that, are those still in play or should people be more aggressive with these? I think be more aggressive. It also depends on the environment. Right now, we do have our wind blowing out our back. I mean, we have the NASDAQ hitting highs. Uh, yes, the Dow's been stumbling a little bit, but that's been some financials that, that took it on the chin. But you have to take the environment, and the environment right now is very favorable. So go with it. I mean, really, someone who is a baby boomer could be, you know, 65, 30. 70% in stocks, 30% in bonds. They can be a lot more aggressive than their you know, generation beforehand. Do you sense, uh, as someone who's, who does this day to day, that, that more Americans are starting to come back uh, and they're starting to re, re, you know, rededicate themselves to retirement in general? I think, I think they're getting more excited. They also know it's not your father's retirement, so to speak. The pensions are not there anymore. Really, the only way to save for most people is through a 401k plan, a little bit at a time, dollar cost averaging in. It's pretty easy. It comes out of your paycheck, pre-tax, and you go with it. But if you don't have a pension, what else are you going to do for retirement? Well, how else are you going to put, you know, put food on the table during retirement if you're not putting away to a 401k or and, 403 and Speaking of which, another one in your books uh, is not your father's retirement, Ken. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks, Charles. It's been a while. Great seeing you. Okay, take care.